Hey guys, it's James here from Replica Reviews. Now today we're going to go back to basics a little bit. We've done a lot about rifle shooting, shotguns recently, um, but I'm quite aware that I've kind of neglected these, you know, the, the, the pistols, where we all started. So today, as you may have just seen from uh, the, the slight hint that I've shown you there, we're going to be reviewing the Umarex MMP40. Now this is a relatively new gun from Umarex, hasn't been around overly long. Now they have done MMP versions before, but they've been fixed slide pellet firers, um, you know, like the, the CP8899 series where the slide comes forward, little rotary mag, or they've even been BBs with little stick mags, you put them in, but again, they've always been all plastic, um, within sort of degrees, and they've always been non-blowback, so it's really nice to see them obviously producing this. Now, there is a big elephant in the room, and I will go into that in a little bit later on in a bit more detail, but I'll give you a little bit of information about uh, where the MMP came from. Now, this was marketed really as the Glock killer, um, you know, aimed really at the, the, the American markets with the police, the military, MMP, funny enough. Um, and as we all know, SIG have kind of beaten them to it um, with their latest uh, announcement. But, you know, it's still a cracking gun and it has sold in its absolute thousands. Um, really popular in the States, you don't really see too many replicas of them. So when Numerex announced that we're going to be doing this one, um, yeah, I just thought I'd grab hold of it see what it's all about. Now, as I say, unlike previous versions, it's a full-size dropout magazine, holds 15 BBs. And then obviously blowback as well. So every time that you cycle the slide, or every time you pull the trigger, it cycles and it loads the next round. So it is truly a semi-automatic pistol. Now one thing I really do like about this, obviously last shot it will lock back, but the springs when you return it, it's a really, really kind of, it's a very positive click. When it goes forward, you know it's gone forward, which is quite nice. And another thing that I really like is they've really gone to town um, with the trademarks, as you'll see hopefully up in this corner, you see that there's trademarks everywhere. You've got the MMP on the side here. You've got the Smith & Wesson logo. Obviously, Smith & Wesson Corp written on the side. And obviously, the logo's just on the bottom of the grips as well. And again, that alludes back to this elephant in the room. But we'll go into that in a little bit more detail uh, in two seconds. Now, as features go, you can field strip this gun just using the takedown lever. Obviously, remove the magazine, bring the slide to the rear, take down lever off and it's very Sig Sauer-esque. If you're familiar with how to take down a pistol, it's really easy to do. So, you know, to be honest with these guns, because they're not powder burning, you don't need to clean them out that much. They occasionally need a little bit of lubrication to make sure they're all working freely, but you don't really need to tinker with them. And I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. They tinker. But anyway, features wise, it does come with a single side magazine dropout. You can only depress it from this side and it's just a simple button press in like so. Now, one thing that is worth noting, they do state you can actually swap them over to make it a left-handed shooter, which ties in really nicely with the safety catch. Now, remember at this point, guys, this is marketed as an M&P 40, but it features a safety catch, which again, hopefully you'll be able to see in a little bit more detail here. And it is on both sides and it does function on both sides, which is quite good because you can literally move it with any point or any side, which is quite helpful. But this is where my kind of point comes in about that elephant in the room. Now, this, is, as I say, is modelled on an M&P 40. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the Smith & Wesson range, the M&P 40 does not come with a safety catch here on this side. However, the German-made M&P 22, which happens to be made by Wolfer, also part of Umarex, happens to have a safety catch here which is exactly the same. So, what you've really got here is a Smith & Wesson M&P 22 with, with M&P 40 decals. Now, if you've got a life, unlike myself, that won't matter too much, but if you're a bit of a die-hard collector, that will bother you. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it makes no odds to me, really. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's still an amazing replica. Now, I would probably put my head on the block a little bit and say that I think this is the best blowback pistol, 4.5mm blowback pistol, that's hit the market in a very long time. Um, and if you haven't already had a look at it, I really suggest just go out, try and find somebody that's got one, a shop that's got one on test, and just give it a go, have a feel, pick it up, and just see what it's about. Because it is a really, really nice pistol. Now what we'll do in two seconds is we'll just move on to obviously firing the pistol. We all want to see what it can do. Now I'm going to be using 4.5mm ASG Blast at BBs. Now these, if I just put the gun down, obviously go into the dropout mag. It's a really simple, load it down like so. CO2 goes in the bottom, you tighten it up with a grub screw. I'm not going to show you, it's really generic. Anybody that's ever used a CO2 gun will know exactly what I'm on about. And obviously once you're done, put the mag in, load the pistol like so, and then from there, 
you're ready to shoot. Now this is a single action only trigger. What that means is obviously you have to cock it for it to work. So if I just pull the trigger back like so, you can see nothing happens. But if I cock the pistol, I'll see what it being empty, it does break. Now the trigger at this point, worth mentioning before we go on, it's a very kind of, um, it's, it's almost like a Glock style trigger. You do need to push it in a little bit and just get it to fire like so. If you don't hold the trigger correctly, I'll show you like so. If you only hold the top bit, it will not fire. So you need to be holding the trigger properly for it to break. So a good little safety thing. So, so unless you're actually holding the gun correctly, it's not going to uh, go off, which is a nice feature. Which obviously with the ambidextrous safety on the back works quite nicely. Now a couple of things that I will mention before we go on the shooting really, really quickly. Um, a couple of the finer details that I really like. Now the sights on this pistol, I, I haven't adjusted them. They allegedly are adjustable. Um, but you can see it's just a standard two dot system on the back here. Really easy to pick up, really easy just to line up and have in front of your eyes quite quickly, which makes plate shooting with this really good fun. And another thing that I did notice, um, I've actually put in the, in the article that I've sent off to Airgun World for this pistol, is they actually have the loading indicator port. Now some guns will have, um, you know, the, uh, the sink off the top of my head, the FNX 45. When you've got a, a round in the chamber, it's got this little lug that sits out about here and that just shows a little red patch so when there's a round in the chamber it just clicks out whereas this one you've almost got like a witnessing port with this hole on the top now you can either have a look down or you can just cock it back just a fraction say the springs on this are really stiff and it just lets you see in now obviously with an air pistol we don't really need to worry about that but it's a nice feature that they've included even though they didn't have to okay so what i've done is we just put a quick target out obviously with a fresh co2 i just want to do a bit of accuracy first now this is just going to be a real world test, i.e. me stood here shooting a pistol at the target that you see behind us. So please don't expect sort of any kind of bench rest quality shooting. Obviously this is just a plinking gun and this essentially is what we're going to do with it. We're going to plink test to see how accurate it is. Now as I say earlier on, we are going to be using the ASG Blaster BBs. You might be able to see those loaded up in the magazine. Um, so yeah, let's load up and uh, let's have some shots with the M&P 40. Okay, so that was the last shot. Let's go and have a look what we've done. Now, I think it's fair to say that's probably my shooting there. Um, obviously, it does seem to want to shoot low right, um, but that could be anything. That could be my hold, whatever. But as you can see, it will hold a nice little group. If you're going to be shooting cans, that'll be more than enough. What I might do is we might do a follow-up video um, where I'll possibly rest the gun and we'll, we'll see exactly what the gun itself can do because I think that's probably, uh, probably poor shooting on my part there. Okay guys, so we've changed the target up a little bit, so I'm just using one of the Jack Pike um, spot shots, um, basically it's like a, a shoot and see. So we'll just put a couple more rounds onto it, I'm going to aim top left now, just see if it was, was my shooting, and we'll see what we can do with the second mag um, in the Smith & Wesson M&P 40. There we go guys, last shot, as I said earlier, it does lock back on the last shot. So we're all clear, let's move forward, just have a look at that target. So that is target two. Now, a little bit better, they are all on target, um, and the uh, the spot shots there from Jack Pike actually kind of make it really quite nice and clear for you all to see. But it is safe to assume that I'm probably not the best pistol shooter in the world. I think if I was doing it off a bench and it was rested, obviously it would be tightened right up. But this is a, a real world test, I'm outside in a field, um, so you know, if I was sat plinking, that's exactly the groups I would get. Now for shooting something like a can off the top of a fence post or whatever, that would be enough. I think that would be more than sufficient, and as I say, it's a good little fun gun to shoot. So yeah, not the most accurate groups in the world, but I think that's me. We might do a follow up video sort of in, in later points and just kind of 
you know maybe bench rest it and that kind of thing but i just thought you know it's a real world review um for people that aren't going to be sat bench resting blowback pistols so you know i'm happy with that group i i yeah it's not the best and i think i'll definitely stick to the rifles but i'm happy so it's a good enough group so anyway let's move on to the conclusion and uh yeah let's see what else we can do Okay guys, so that is our review of the MMP40 um, complete. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this. We tried a slightly different format today. Um, obviously I'm playing with new software and things. We thought we'd just try and change things up a little bit and make this review that extra bit better than, than some of the ones that we've had before. Now as pistols go, as I said earlier, this in my opinion is one of the best 4.5mm blowback replicas that Humorex have produced in a very, very long time. And as I say, if you know anybody that's got one, a shop that has one in stock, go and have a look. The springs, as I say earlier, are very sharp. This thing's recoil, it's very strong. It's a very snappy recoil. It's literally back forward. There's no kind of waiting on some guns because the slides are heavy, the springs aren't up to it. It does feel very slow to cycle, whereas this is a very, very fast shooting gun, as you probably saw during the, in, during the shooting section. Now, they do come in a little bit more expensive. Now, they range in price depending on where you buy it from. I bought this one from the Sportsman's Gun Centre in Exeter for, I think, it's about £127. But I have seen them being sold um, by other local shops for just over sort of 170 verging on £180. So, there is a hell of a price difference. Um, obviously, there are reasons for that. Um, I'm not going to go into the politics behind it. But you know you can get a good deal on this pistol now i paid as i say 127 pounds i think that was a good deal would i want to pay sort of anywhere up to 180 for it not so much i think that's going to be the top end of of what's kind of acceptable really um when you're looking at 180 pounds go and buy yourself a cp88 they are so so much better um but again completely different pistol depends what you're after now I really like what they've done and if you can ignore the fact that this is an MMP 22 dressed up as an MMP 40 then yeah this will be one of the best replicas you ever own and um, yeah I absolutely love it it's not going anywhere anytime soon as far as I'm concerned this will be one to stay in the collection um, so yeah I'll put more pictures of this one over on our Facebook page once I've had a chance to get a couple of close-up pictures. So if you want to check those out, feel free to go and search Replica Reviews on Facebook. We'll pop straight up. We'll put loads of pictures, videos, and, and all sorts on there. So go and have a look at that one. Obviously, we are on Twitter, if you're part of the, the dreaded Twitter. And obviously, if you just want to see what's coming up from us in future months, for the rest of 2017, I've got some really big things planned. Feel free to click subscribe below. Um, and yeah, as always, any questions, any comments, feel free to put them below and I'll make the time to reply to anybody as long as it's a comment I can reply to. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. This was the Smith & Wesson MMP40 made by Umarex. And until our next video, thanks for watching.